Hello everyone, this is me back with radiographic interpretation made easy. We are on case 14 now and the case that I'm going to talk about is about dilaceration. My name is Dr. Lahari and I'm from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology. The steps in radiographic interpretation would be uh, the same as usual. First of all, the radiograph taken, normal anatomical landmarks, faults if any, the tooth or teeth of interest, crown, root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, radiographic diagnosis and differential diagnosis wherever appropriate. Okay, so the radiograph taken and the one which we are discussing today is an intraoral periapical radiograph of the second quadrant. The teeth seen are 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6 and 2, 7. The radiographic faults is a slight elongation which has happened because of um, a problem with the angulation. So there must be um, uh, less vertical angulation because of which we are seeing slight elongation of the image which is understood by the length of the root canine root as well as the first premolar root. The normal anatomical landmarks that are seen in this region are the floor of the maxillary sinus, zygomatic arch which is shown by the orange uh, line here and of course prominent lamina dura seen in the first premolar. The teeth of interest are uh, 2, 5 and 2, 6. 2, 5 we see that it has a normal crown but 2, 6 the crown is completely lost and what we see is only the roots. So if you notice in the root of 2, 5 you will see that there is bending of the root and this is what we call as dilaceration. In case of 2, 6 we see that there are three root fragments. All first molars, maxillary first molars have three roots and uh, we can distinctly differentiate the mesiobuccal from the distobuccal and the palatal root. So you will notice that the palatal root is relatively embedded in the bone whereas the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal roots are superficially placed. Moving on to the height of alveolar crest, it is in case of 2, 5 appears uh, reasonably normal up to 3 mm below the CEJ whereas in case of 2, 7 you can see uh, about 4 to 5 mm of vertical bone loss. The periodontal ligament space in case of 2, 5 completely normal even though the root is dilacerated. And in relation to 2, 6, we see that there's complete loss of the periodontal ligament space all, all along the length of the root fragments. When we're speaking about lamina dura, again, in case of 2, 5, the lamina dura is normal. Whereas in case of 2, 6, since there is complete loss of PDL, it's important to notice the lamina dura and we observe that it's completely lost as well all along the roots uh, fragments. And we notice that the mesiobuccal and distobuccal are virtually um, embedded only in soft tissue with very little bone support. That's what we're talking about. The alveolar bone proper, uh, there's a little bit of uh, important things going on here. In case of 2 5, there is no absolute pathology. So it's a normal tooth just with a little bit of dilaceration. But what we notice in case of 2, 6, since there are only root fragments left, is that the complete, uh, there is the trabecular pattern which is completely altered and we see that there's a mixed radiolucent and radio-opaque appearance in the bone. So that is the area that we want you to concentrate on. Uh, this is ill-defined and covers ar around 2 times 1 cm and you would notice that it blends into the adjacent normal bone. This is typically the inflammatory bone response. When we are looking at a mixed lesion, it's generally because of both osteoclastic and osteoplastic activity, and we would call this as rarefying osteitis. 
to summarize the radiographic diagnosis, 2.5 is a normal tooth but has root dilaceration. 2.6 are root fragments with rarefying ostitis and the radiographic differential diagnosis would be osseous dysplasia, um, also called a cemental dysplasia or cemento osseous dysplasia or simply a chronic periapical abscess. For further reading, I have picked these two interesting articles, uh, both of which are case reports which talk about uh, root canal treatment in uh, premolars with dilaceration. And that, that would be an interesting read, which can tell you what the clinical implication of dilacerated uh, root is. That's it. Thank you for me and uh, thank you for listening to me. For, for any further doubts or clarifications, please feel free to email me.